We left off on our last podcast talking about how come it takes more energy to vaporize a substance as opposed to having to just melt it. And that's because you have to break all of the intermolecular forces that hold it together. But now what we'd like to talk about is something called vapor pressure. And what that is actually is just, if you could look at it from a superhuman point of view, you can see molecules escape from the surface of a liquid through this process of vaporization, or you could also call it evaporation. So if the temperature is staying constant and you have this liquid that's inside a closed container, the pressure will build up until you reach something called the equilibrium vapor pressure. And that's much easier for me to explain by using a picture rather than reading these words here. So let's take a look at the picture. This is a closed-end manometer. As you can see right here, that's sealed. You can put a liquid like ethanol that's quite volatile inside that container, open up that valve, and just spontaneously, because some of the molecules near the surface have enough escape energy, these molecules near the surface will start to leave the liquid and go into the vapor phase. But after they build up and they get their own unique pressure, then some of the molecules that used to be gas can come back and enter back into the liquid phase. And we are now at what we call equilibrium. We'll be doing a whole chapter on equilibrium, but when the rate of vaporization equals the rate of the vapor returning back to liquid, then nothing more will change inside that container as far as the pressure is concerned. And so that's why it's called equilibrium vapor pressure. Now, of course, if you heat up that substance, you can speed up that process and reach a higher vapor pressure at a higher temperature. But some substances, like all the alcohols, are highly volatile. So at any instant, some of those molecules have enough kinetic energy that are at the surface to just break free of the intermolecular forces that would normally hold them into the liquid. So if you have a weak intermolecular force of attraction, more molecules can es escape, and therefore you will have a vapor pressure that's higher than something that has a lower vapor pressure. So water, for example, holding on with hydrogen bonds is probably going to have a lower vapor pressure than something like the alcohols. So that's called volatility, and of course, if you stupidly put a heat source underneath the beaker in picture B, you could increase the pressure by giving more of the molecules enough kinetic energy to go into the vapor phase. So now what we're going to come to is both an explanation and hopefully in the end of this podcast a demonstration. What you're seeing here is a graphical representation that yes, as you increase temperature from left to right, the vapor pressure of various substances will also increase. Notice we're measuring those in torr, which is the same as a millimeter. So let's just pick a line like water. So this is showing as you get water hotter and hotter and hotter, more and more of the molecules have enough kinetic energy to enter the vapor phase. Now this is a very important point. If you look down, we're at 100 degrees Celsius. And you know that when water boils, the thermometer at sea level reads 100 degrees. So look at this. Here is the normal pressure on a day at sea level when there's no hurricanes floating through, you're not up on Mount Everest. So we've up until this point said that the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. We now need to qualify that statement. It will be 100 degrees Celsius if the pressure is normal atmospheric, 760 millimeters. So the way you can think of it, it's like, the molecules of a volatile substance are like, we want to go be free, we want to go be free, let my people go. But the man that's holding them down is atmospheric pressure. So you have to give them enough kinetic energy to be able to beat back the atmospheric pressure pushing down on them so they can escape from the liquid phase and go into a gas phase as you add heat. That's how you get it to boil. So liquids will boil when the external pressure at the surface of the liquid is either equal to or less than the vapor pressure. Let's say that in a better way. A liquid can boil 
when the vapor pressure is going to exceed this atmospheric pressure pushing down on it. So notice that some substances can boil at a much lower temperature and that's because they have, as you can see here, very different vapor pressure. If you have to heat things hotter like water to finally get it to boil, that means that they must have had stronger intermolecular forces of attraction holding them in their liquid phase than say something like this ethanol. I can get ethanol to boil at 78 degrees. So that's what we call a vapor pressure curve and as you will see when we study phase diagrams, it makes one part of the phase diagram. Let that go for later. So this is called the normal boiling point at 760 millimeters of mercury or one atmosphere and essentially it's when the vapor pressure curve crosses the atmospheric pressure line. So you really have two ways to get a liquid to boil. You can add heat to it and you can increase the kinetic energy so that more of the molecules can break free of the intermolecular forces at the surface and go get vaporized or you can let off on the pressure. So there's these things called pressure cookers that actually put higher pressure over the surface of, substance, of a substance cooking in a big pressure cooker pot. And so when you have water inside a pressure cooker, the boiling point is going to have to be higher than 100 degrees because it's fighting against this increased pressure on its surface. So pressure cookers are good for cooking food at higher temperatures. What we're going to do is this worksheet to make sure you understand the concepts of vapor pressure and boiling. And then I have a fun demonstration that shows how you can get water to boil without even having to add heat. So I'll stop the vodcast now and you'll do the next activity prescribed by your teacher.